Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about famotidine. Famotidine is one of the medication that is classified as H2 receptor blocker. We can identify these category of medications by the suffix tidine. So medications like cimetidine, ranitidine, nizatidine, all these are belonging to the same category. They are H2 receptor blockers. Famotidine blocks the H2 receptors, thereby it reduces gastric acid release. This medication can be used in the conditions that are associated with the excessive gastric acid secretion. So it can be used in the treatment of heartburn and gastric and duodenal ulcers. It is available as tablet as well as oral suspension. Even it is available as injection for solution for use in the hospitals. Famotidine can also be used in the conditions where the gastric acid is reflexed back into the esophagus. So this medication can be used in the treatment of erosive esophagitis and gastroesophageal reflux disorder. These two conditions are associated with excess gastric acid secretion and the backflow of this excess gastric acid into the esophagus can produce irritation as well as inflammation. Since famotidine can reduce the gastric acid secretion, it can be used to manage both of these conditions. In this video, let us discuss about the key information of famotidine, how this medication works, what happens to this medication in people with the renal impairment, what is, this, what is its effect on the central nervous system and how it interacts with few other medications, all such things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let us discuss how this medication works. Histamine plays an important role in our body. It can act as a local mediator as well as it can act as a neurotransmitter. Histamine can produce its action in our body through different types of histamine receptors. Among them, histamine H1 receptors and H2 receptors are well noted. H1 receptors are mainly located in the CNS as well as they play an important role during the allergic response. When they are activated, they can produce vasodilation and increase the capillary permeability. Therefore, H1 receptors are the better drug targets for antihistamines like cetrazine, meclizine, fexofenadine, and promethazine. All these medications are classified as antihistamines and they block uh, histamine H1 receptors. On the other hand, H2 receptors are mainly located in the gastric parietal cells. They are responsible for stimulation of gastric acid secretion. Famotidine blocks these H2 receptors, thereby it can control gastric acid secretion. Normally, the gastric acid secretion can be carried by different types of stimuli. One such type of stimuli is mediated by cholinergic neurons. These cholinergic neurons can release the acetylcholine, which can act through the cholinergic receptors. So, on the gastric parietal cells, muscanic acetylcholine receptors are expressed. Now, acetylcholine can act on these receptors that results in the activation of IP3 and diacyl glycerol system. This increases the intracellular calcium levels leading to depolarization of the gastric parietal cells which stimulates the proton pump. This proton pump is nothing but H plus K plus ATP pump. When this pump is activated, it can secrete the protons for an exchange of potassium. Chloride ions are passively secreted into the lumen where they can form HCl as gastric acid. Now this is the cholinergic stimulation by which gastric acid is released by neuronal activation. Second type of stimuli is through the histamine. Histamine can act as a local mediator and it can increase the gastric acid secretion by acting on the histamine H2 receptors. Now when histamine binds to these receptors, they can stimulate adenyl cyclase system. When this system is activated, it can increase the production of cyclic KMP. Cyclic KMP plays an important role as a secondary messenger. It can activate protein kinase A. These are the phosphorylating enzymes that are responsible for activation of many of the targets. And one of such target is the proton pump. So proton pump is activated that results in the increased secretion of gastric acid. In this way, Histamine can act as a local mediator and it can increase the gastric acid secretion. Now, famotidine is selectively blocking these H2 receptors. 
and it acts as an antagonist at these receptors. By binding to these receptors, it can inhibit the activation of adenylyl cyclase system. This results in the decreased production of cyclic AMP and reduced activation of proton pump. In this way, famotidine can reduce gastric acid secretion. Now let us see the precautions of this medication. Famotidine can enter into your brain and it can produce few of the central effects. With use of this medication, you may have confusion, hallucinations and disorientation. It can also produce a state of agitation and weakness. In higher doses, famotidine can also induce the seizures in the people. However, at normal dose, these side effects are very mild, but in people with a moderate to severe renal impairment, the famotidine is more accumulated in the body, leading to development of central side effects. Therefore, in people with any renal dysfunction, famotidine should be carefully used. Another effect of this medication is on the heart. When famotidine used at higher doses or when it is used at uh, more frequencies, it can affect the function of your heart. Particularly, it can produce QT interval prolongation in the ECG. When this QT interval is prolonged, it indicates development of cardiac arrhythmias. So you may have rapid heartbeats with use of famotidine. This QT prolongation is not observed in people with normal renal function. However, in people with renal impairment, famotidine is more accumulated in the body. Famotidine is metabolized in the liver and it is excreted through the urine. Therefore, in people with renal impairment, the excretion of famotidine is reduced, leading to more retention of famotidine in the body. This results in the increased effect on QT prolongation. That's when people with renal impairment the dose of famotidine should be reduced. When the creatine clearance levels are less than 50 ml per minute, the dose of famotidine should be reduced to its half. Sometimes, instead of reducing the dose, the dosing interval can be modified so that it can be taken at uh, less frequent intervals. Normally, famotidine can be taken two times per day and it can be taken daily for eight weeks. But in people with renal impairment, famotidine can be taken for every 36 to 48 hours. That means on every third or fourth day to reduce its accumulation in the body. In this way, in people with renal impairment, either dose is reduced to half or dosing interval is increased. And the effect of famotidine is on the state of confusion. This medication can produce confusion and delirium in the people, which is particularly observed in the people with ages above 50 years. It is also more pronounced in the elders. That's why when it is used in the elders, care should be taken to monitor alertness in the people. This effect is also more pronounced in people with any liver impairment or renal impairment. Famotidine should not be used in few conditions due to difficulty in oral administration, otherwise due to adverse effects that are related with gastric acid secretion. Famotidine should be avoided in people with difficulty swallowing or people who are having blood in the vomiting, this drug should be avoided. Even famotidine should be avoided in people with blood in the stools or black stools. When famotidine is given with few other medications, it can reduce their absorption or dissolution. One such type of medication is the fosampranavir. This is a protease inhibitor that is used to treat HIV infection. The absorption of fosampranavir is reduced by famotidine that results in the loss of efficacy in HIV treatment. That's why famotidine should be avoided with fosampranavir. Few other medications require acidic environment for dissolution in the stomach. So medications like ketoconazole, itraconazole, atazanavir, erlotinib, all these are better absorbed in acidic environment. Since famotidine is reducing the gastric acid secretion, taking famotidine along with these drugs can reduce their absorption. This may result in either delay or loss of their efficacy. That's why a sufficient gap should be maintained when famotidine is administered along with these drugs. Famotidine acts as a weak inhibitor of CYP1A2 enzyme. Normally in the liver, metabolic enzymes like CYP3A4 play an important role 
in the metabolism of many of the medications. However, CYP1A2 can also produce the metabolism of few of the drugs like tizanidine. Tizanidine is a centrally acting muscle relaxant. It can be used to relieve muscle spasms and muscle cramps. However, tizanidine is metabolized by CYP1A2 enzyme in the liver. When it is taken along with famotidine, this metabolism is inhibited leading to increased levels of tizanidine in the body. This results in the increased risk of hypotension, bradycardia and excessive drowsiness. That's why famotidine should be avoided along with tizanidine. Prolonged treatment of famotidine can produce decreased absorption of few vitamins. When famotidine is used for greater than 2 years, it can produce the vitamin B12 malabsorption that results in vitamin B12 deficiency. This may produce some tingling sensation in the hands and feet and few of the neuronal problems. Interestingly, this effect can be more pronounced in the females and in the people with ages below 30 years. Now let us the side effects of this medication. The side effects of amotidine are mild and well tolerated. It mainly produces headache, dizziness and constipation. In a few people, it can also produce diarrhea. Few other side effects like fatigue, fever and lack of energy can be produced. It can also produce abdominal pain, dry mouth and loss of appetite. Rarely it can produce cholestatic jaundice. Dry skin, flushing and itching are also possible with use of famotidine. Now let us the doses of this medication. Famotidine is available as tablet as an over-the-counter medication. It is available at three strengths such as 10 mg, 20 mg and 40 mg. Even it is available as oral suspension at a strength of 40 mg per 5 ml. For treating duodenal ulcers and gastric ulcers, it can be started at a dose of 20 mg given twice daily. Otherwise, it can be taken at a single dose of 40 mg at bedtime for 8 weeks. Famotidine has moderate bioavailability. Around 40 to 45 percent of this medication is bioavailable into the body. This low bioavailability is due to high first pass metabolism in the liver. Famotidine has an onset of action less than one hour when it is given by oral route. Normally, the half life of famotidine is 2.5 to 4 hours, but in people with uh, severe renal impairment, the half life may be increased to 20 hours, leading to more accumulation in the body. What is famotidine? Famotidine is a selective H2 receptor blocker. It reduces the gastric acid secretion by blocking histamine H2 receptors. How this medication works? Famotidine blocks H2 receptors, thereby it reduces activation of adenyl cyclase system. This results in the decreased production of cyclic AMP and decreased intracellular calcium levels. Finally, this results in the reduced production of gastric acid secretion. What is the important precaution of this medication? Famotidine can produce QT intraoral prolongation in people with severe renal impairment. What is the important side effect of this medication? It mainly produces dizziness, headache and constipation as important side effects. What are the clinical use of this medication? Famotidine can be used in conditions which are associated with excessive gastric acid secretion. It can be used in the management of heartburn, erosive esophagitis, gastroesophageal reflux disorder, jolinger ellison syndrome, and even gastric and duodenal ulcers. jolinger ellison syndrome is a tumor that produces gastrin. It is a rare condition. However, due to the war production of gastrin, it can increase the gastric acid secretion. In such conditions, famotidine can be used to control the gastric acid secretion. So that's all about the famotidine. I hope this video is useful to you. If you really like this video, please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.